All right, Ray, this is uh, Kat showing you one thing that we didn't cover today that we needed to, and that is importing the Adobe Illustrator file into SketchUp to create a 3D model. And so, for example, we've been using SketchUp Pro 2013 here. Um, we need to use the Pro version to be able to import the DWG files, the AutoCAD files. So we're going to go ahead and start using SketchUp. You'll see that this is the Pro version. It's an evaluation copy, but we can still practice. So I'm going to zoom in here and get rid of our little guy, and then go to the File menu and choose Import. And one of the things you'll see is that I have the, D, the NKU logo only DWG, and I can see them because the format AutoCAD Files DWG DXF is chosen. If it was on the default, which is SketchUp files, you won't be able to import those. So you need to make sure you've got this selected. Um, there's nothing under the Options button that we need, but we'll go ahead and select the DWG file and click Import. It'll give you this little warning box or Import Results box, and you can just click OK. Um, you'll notice that when we look at this, though, if I were to use my cursor and highlight, you'll see that this is just a series of little broken lines. And the other thing that you can see is that this is not filled in. So SketchUp doesn't see this as something that we can uh, use the push-pull tool on. So it's not a surface, it's just a series of lines. So we need to get a surface associated with this so we can use the push-pull tool. Um, what we can do is I can see here that if I have placed this, I've placed it on the main plane. If I go in and grab my rectangle tool and I start at the origin and then I draw a box around this, I can then go in and test and see if this is actually on the same plane, and it is. So you can see that when I click on the N or I click on the K, that it sees that these are surfaces now. So I could go in with my cursor and remember click lower right to upper left and cross these edges and then hit the delete key. And I notice that the flame here is not actually picking it up, so that might be a problem. But I can go delete the rest of these lines. There's a little one sitting right here as well, and delete them. So I'm going to go in and try and fix this little flame here. So in this case, I might have to, you know, find a point and click on another point, and you'll notice that it did fill in. So at that point, we can use our eraser to erase this line. And so you can see now that our whole logo is, um, is filled in, so it's now a surface. At this point, we can then use our push-pull tool. So I can click and drag this up. And then remember, too, now that if I just double-click, or if I click, bring this up, and then hover over another surface to get the, uh, the other inference, now all of these letters are the same height. Now I did have, um, on this one, I wanted to go ahead and make this little flame yellow. And so what I've done is I've used my paint bucket, and I've gone to the colors. Let's say colors and model, and I don't have any here. But I can go ahead and right click and create a new texture. When I come up here to the top, I can choose that texture. Remember I sent you a yellow texture, so go ahead and click on yellow and click open. And then let's change this to like two inches by two inches. All right, now I can use this. Remember that I want to triple click to select the whole thing. Then if I select the yellow, I can then, oops, let's triple click again, select the yellow, grab my paint bucket, and I can fill that in yellow. So now the logo is, is complete. Um, if I wanted this to be black letters for a white background, I can also just select these. You would triple click. I can hold the shift key, triple click, and select all of that, and then I could paint it black. All right. But at this point, I just want to select the whole thing, and I want to group it, and then I'm going to upload it to the, to the warehouse. So in this case, I'm going to click down on the lower right and drag to the upper left, remember, and select the whole thing right click and choose make component and I'm going to call this NKU logo. Now something that I had not done and this is something that would make it easier is you can choose glue to any horizontal vertical or sloped surface. So I'm going to say I want it to glue to any surface. So when we bring it in whereas we brought it in on our sign 
in this case, it would actually glue itself to the sign. Um, and so that's something we want it to do. So we'll go ahead and click Create. All right. So it's now a component, which could also be counted. So on the last step, what I want to do is upload this to the 3D Warehouse. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the File menu, and I'm going to choose 3D Warehouse Share Component. All right, and so it'll show it over here. And when I can say Insert Model Tile, we'll call it NKU um, Logo Number Two, and it's a required. So we'll just say this is the NKU Logo uh, 3D for Signage. And then we can put NKU comma maybe university. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and upload. So it's uploading it up to the 3D warehouse. So if you were doing multiple signs, um, you could actually go up and then bring this back down to add to your signage uh, when you're working on a project. And here it is. All right, so I'm going to set this aside for a moment and I'm going to delete the logo. We'll just get rid of it and play like we had our sign that we were working on earlier. So let's just go ahead, make a quick base, and then I'm just gonna pull this up like this. I'm going to triple click it, group it, and turn it black. All right, so at this point, I wanna go ahead and add the NKU logo to this. So I can go up to the 3D warehouse. I can get a model. I'm going to search for NKU. There should now be two since I've uploaded two of them. And it should be searching. We'll click search. Hope it comes back with something. <laughs> click search again. There it is. And so we have this NKU logo number two. I'm going to download the model, load it into the SketchUp model. And what you'll notice now is that now it wants to glue itself to the surface. So last time we had to resize and do some funky stuff, but gluing it to the surface is handy. And then you could go in with your scale tool like we did. And if those handles are too small, use your scroll wheel to zoom in and they'll spread apart. And then you could click on this. Remember to hold your shift key. You can also zoom in and out at the same time to get a better view and then click to set the size. And so that is going to be an easier way to do that, but that's how we can get that logo in. So I hope that's helpful, and uh, good luck, and give me a holler if you need anything.